wrong Wednesday. Ah, uh, February 15th. God, just think of the time that goes by, man. It just zooms so fast, makes your head spin. And we're on day 13 here, day 13. Where's that little bus? Oh, it must be the 18 bus. Uh, so we get on day 13. Things are things are winding down a little bit. Uh, let's see how we are today on the roads of Beaverton, the worst traffic engineering known to mankind exists in Beaverton, Oregon. And uh, we're gonna go navigate those awful goddamn engineered roads and uh, hopefully we'll do okay today uh, those first three hours if i didn't have to deal with that it would be just wonderful it's the only thing that ruins it and they don't give me enough recovery time you know there's insufficient re recovery time which is screwing me for the first three hours you know a lot of us a lot of us want to be on time it's got nothing to do with trimet we want to be on time. I mean, a real, a true professional tries to be on time. You know, you don't, you don't like to run late because people. The, the best thing you can do for transit riders is to pick them up on time and get them where they need to be as fast as you can. That is what they want. That is what the customer wants. Okay, you talk about customer satisfaction. That's what they want. They don't give a shit about anything else really. You know, or pleasantly. Now, you don't have to be a, a rock star or a comedian. You just need to be nice to them. They don't want to be abused, you know. A mildly decent personality and a bus driver that gets his bus there on time without crashing or making people fall out of their seats. That is what transit customers want. They want to make their connections. They don't want to have to deal with... Uh, misconnections and the like they want to get there on time so that's what i try to do i mean that's how i derive my satisfaction from this job other than having great conversations with a lot of my great passengers who i just love you know I've got a lot of good people riding these buses and for the most part you know it does run pretty well i mean let's face it you know if if the system doesn't get chinked, you know, in other words, if the Max was running right and the 67 was running right, mine is all right, mine is, my 60, Dross's is a piece of shit, you know, because they don't have it scheduled right. Mine appears to be, appears to be uh, livable, let's put it that way. Uh, I'm within, I'm within time frames and I, I work late enough so the traffic will clear up later at 7 o'clock. See, the first three hours, if I just work and don't get a break, I can generally run it, I wouldn't say on time, but within a reasonable parameter. You know, I say a reasonable parameter is five minutes or less late in terms of people being satisfied with the service. Shouldn't be ever late, really. They should always have enough time built into their schedule so that you don't have you're not late unless there's something unforeseeable of course i mean you can't something that's you don't know is going to happen in the case of the 67 those traffic jams are foreseeable i mean they're not always there i mean some days you can zoom right through but they're there more than they're not there so they, they needed to build in more time but they didn't and that, that's just grinding your operators down. You just grind them down. So I did more investigating on the best healthcare. Uh, Michael Anderson denies that he said that, but I've read it several times in several articles of his. The best healthcare in the country, or one of the best, whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. The subliminal message is the same, the propaganda is the same. We have the best healthcare. Well, it turns out that we don't because Boston's MBTA is better than ours. How about that? And they pay more. So that's all been based on a lie. The best healthcare in the industry. Wrong lie. Now, if you prove one thing wrong, 
that means the whole thing should be thrown out because you've proven that they didn't, the people that are perpetuating this propaganda didn't bother to verify their facts. They just spit it out there, you know? And uh, that does not wash. Here we go. Mad rush up the hill. I've got the school bus. And there they go. The bumper cars are starting. Proper lane, you don't have to merge over. So, uh, okay, Bruce Hansen's going to be at the uh, open house today. Good for him. Congratulations on being a. See, that's what we need a president that's. Where's John? He's missing. And the theory is, by the way, that John Hunt has got some kind of deal he's made with. Farland, he's gonna roll it out here any minute. Uh, why else would he just stay in hiding like he's doing? Why would he? Why would he not make any kind of public statements? Why is he so quiet? Everybody wants to know. Why are you not? You have nothing to say, John, about all of this. Nothing to say. It's very bizarre, isn't it? I mean, I know in the end, in the end, it would come down to arbitration or strike. Those are the two options. If they can even get people to strike, which I have my doubts, of course. Uh, I certainly have no problem, but I have that I have nothing to lose either. I mean I can quit if I want. I don't have any debts, I don't have any family to support. I can pick up and move back east at a moment's notice if I want to. Uh, so for me it's easy to say, oh I, I can strike because I can. So lucky. Although most of the workforce here, or at least a great part of it, their kids are all grown up. They've gone out of the house. So I'm not sure why they are. Here's another one for you. I'm not sure why they're so insistent upon working all the time. Some of these people. It's just addiction to money, I think. Really, I really think that. The other thing about that MBTA article. It showed how much money people really are making working for the transit, and, I, and I've I've had a problem with that for quite a long, long time. Is that transit is such a money-making opportunity to so many people while they're cutting service and raising fares? It is rather unconscionable. Okay, it really isn't right. There's something wrong with that picture because the transit districts and this and many of these many of the cities in this country, everybody involved in providing the transit is actually making out like a damn bandit, and that includes driving. There's a lot of people, drivers included, who make a lot of money here. And I have I have problems with that, when you can't provide even decent services. Of course, you know, in the greater context, of course, there should be money available because the government, in its foolhardiness, would rather bomb Afghanistan and kill innocent Afghani children than actually pay for our transit system so people can get around. And uh, unfortunately, that's the way it is. I mean, I, I took a, a vow of minimalism quite a few years ago where I would never aspire to any more money than I actually needed at that moment. Interestingly enough, even after taking that, I seem to be continuing to accumulate small amounts of wealth, even though I'm not trying to do it. It's not part of it's not part of my consciousness. I refuse to allow money to become my consciousness. You know, it's a driving force of everything in our culture, and I, I just refuse that. I'm not, I don't I don't want that in my consciousness. I don't want that reality invading. So that's where that stands. Uh, that will all die down, all of this uh, chill thing. And I don't know. I think it's. You know, I really don't know what to make of any of it at this point. I think it's really sad that the uh, company is just being such bully boys. I don't see their purpose in that at all. The bully boys of TriMet, and that's that's all they are. It's led by McFarland. I mean, 
if you look at his behavior, you see that he is, uh, he's been bullying since he got here. His, his new sheriff in town policy, which is, I'm sure that was actually said at some of those ridiculous recertification courses. Uh, that's, that's insulting, man. You know, that's an insulting thing to say. Rather than, we're going to work together to solve a problem, his idea is, there's a new sheriff in town. I'm the big man now, and I'm going to whip you all into shape. And that, that's disturbing, you know. Things don't work like that, okay? This is supposed to be a non-profit organization run for the benefit of humans. Transit's supposed to be helpful to human beings. We're supposed to be here to help other people. That's, that's the point. It shouldn't be run like a company, like a profit-making Fortune 500 company. And this addiction to light rail, that's why I'm not against the Republican freeze on the transit funding. I agree. I, I agree with them. If, if they're going to continue the funding as they've been doing, then, the, then fuck it. Send it back. Because they're not helping anybody now. The transit cuts are happening in spite, this is before any cuts to federal funding. They're cutting transit. So, in other words, the federal funding isn't helping run transit. I don't know what the hell. They're using it for all this expansion shit. They're not actually using it to help run transit. This light rail idea, I'm not, it's this church of light rail that just gets funded. The public doesn't want it. If you can connect major cities like Hillsboro, Portland, Gresham, yeah, it makes sense. <coughs> a shopping center, a.k.a. Clackamas Town Center, a line up 205 and around, and that's just bullshit. The Vancouver line, the yellow line, has value only in the sense that eventually it will go over to Vancouver. Other than that, it's, it's just ridiculous. It doesn't go anywhere. They say that it's improved the look of Interstate Ave. Has it? I don't know. Has anybody done it in value? They say that it spurs economic growth along the line. Has it? TriMet says yes. I haven't been up there in a long time. I, I, when I get some time off, I'm going to take a look up on Interstate Ave. I think I did take a drive. It did look a little better. So there you, but I mean that's not what transit funds are supposed to be used for. You gotta, you have to understand. Part of my objection to that is transit funds are not supposed to be used to beautify the countryside or to build business. It's supposed to be to get people where they need to go, and that's that's my main objection. Is the hijacking of the transit money for economic purposes and putting it into the pockets of developers who've made, who've made fortunes on this. All the people that own property along light rail lines, their, their net worth has increased triple. I mean, it's a boom for the people that are involved with this light rail thing. It's just not, it's not for the common people. It's for the people of means already. People that have money are making more money on it. And all these contractors, of course, are just making, are, are just uh, making out. By the way, Janet Torin has advised me that for $1.50 I can have the pension report. Now, it took him a month to, to do that, but uh, so I have our man Jason McHuff on the job. $1.50, and there goes Steve Morgan and Mr. Reliable. For $1.50, we'll see what the pension figures are. I can't wait to see what they are, really. That's exciting.